Hi, it's Jen from Shabby Fabrics, back with the Door Banner Club tutorials, and this time it's for July. This is called Patriot Dreams. We are loving this series, and if you are seeing this video, um, maybe you bought your kit from another shop. Maybe it wasn't even from us. Welcome. This is not just for our group that bought the kits from Shabby Fabrics. It's for people that bought this kit anywhere from any shop and want some tips and techniques. And if you haven't subscribed, I encourage you to do that right now even. Just push pause on the video and go subscribe. This is the place to be for free tutorials. Whether you bought the kit from us or not, we don't care. We just want you to join our quilting community, have fun, learn some tech tips and techniques, and maybe encourage others. Maybe they're leaving a question in the comments, having difficulties. By all means, if you've got the expertise to help them out, let them know your ideas. This is a quilting community. So for this project, of course, the kits have everything you need, except for uh, your batting, if you're going to use that, and the backing. But everything else is inside in that just beautiful uh, kit that Riley Blake does such a great job of putting together. So for this project here, we have our stripes. That's where the two and a half inch creative grid ruler is so handy. I love a ruler that is the footprint of the piece I'm going to be doing because now I can just lay that down and I can just cut right along that. So that's what these stripes are here. But our focus will be, of course, on the patchwork. We have five of our star blocks and these are the hourglass blocks. Notice how these blocks here are still hourglass blocks, just small. So we're going to start off with that one and show you how actually easy it is to put this together. We start off, of course, with some nice clean cuts. And if you are guilty as I am about not changing your blade in the rotary cutter, just do that before you get started cutting your kit. We've also added some sizing to our fabric really even before we ironed everything and made those clean cuts. Sizing helps stabilize fabric, makes it a little bit firmer in our hands. And as we cut things, perhaps on the bias, we don't have as much stretch. So it's low cost sizing is worth its weight in gold. And also with precise piecing, of course, you're going to want to put a fresh needle in the sewing machine, something else I used to be guilty of. And now I'm like, you know what? A new project deserves a new needle. It just feels right. <laughs> so starting off with your two squares here, let me show you where we're going. Let's start off with that and then let's talk about how we're going to get there. So you can see that we have this combination of the navy blue and white, and then we have that light, lighter blue and white, and we're going to start off making some half square triangles. So the first thing we do is simply place our fabrics right side together. And as my habit, I tend to draw on the lighter uh, colored fabric, just easy to do. You can either just grab a straight edge and draw corner to corner, sewing on either side of that line by a quarter of an inch. Or my favorite technique is to simply place the Creative Grid seam guide corner to corner and draw on either side. And we've done that ahead of time here. And you're just sewing on those lines. It's so relaxing when I don't have to find a quarter inch away from a line and I get to just sew on the line. I'm way more accurate, so that's my favorite technique. Once you've sewn on those lines, again, you're just going to grab a straight edge and we're going to cut corner to corner. Your iron is, should be heating up and let's press both of those to the dark side. That's a great habit to get into. And if you're an experienced quilter, you already know that. But if you're a beginner, and you're like, you know, why would there be a reason to press to the dark instead of the white? That's just because I've learned from the past when I would press a dark fabric toward the white, that sometimes that dark fabric, when this is pressed over, so let's pretend that instead of pressing to the dark here, we press to the white. Let's just show, let me just show you that. What happened here is my white fabric was just a little bit short of my dark fabric. I saw this in a quilt I made early on and the darker fabric was, there was like a blue line showing behind and I learned then just press to the dark side unless there's a reason and sometimes there is um, to press differently. So we're going to press to the dark after all of that, if I haven't convinced you. <laughs> I am going to press to the dark side right now 
And that's going to be important later on as well because we're going to get some interlocking seams by keeping that convention. Interlocking seams are going to be important to us. This, as you saw, will give you two and you simply trim away those little, what they call dog ears, and get them out of the way. You repeat that process with your lighter blue and your white. Again, I did my uh, seam guide here through the lines and again, cut in half till we have two of these. And again, let's just uh, trim off those dog ears. That is how an hourglass uh, block begins. Once you have this, these two, let me just set them up so you can see what I'm doing here. The next thing that we do is we're going to place these in opposites. So let's just look at that. So we, we can see that we have opposites. And when I flip this back, do you see how we're getting our hourglass here? Once you place them in opposites, and I want you to see that, remember the convention of pressing to the dark. That did a couple things for us. It protected us, like I said, in case that darker fabric were to show through if you were pressing to the white. But now we get interlocking seams. That seam is going to the left, this seam's going to the right. So as I line these up and stack them right on top of each other, they wanna nest just beautifully. Once you've done that, and let me just show you so it's the same exact sight picture. We once again grab our seam guide, corner to corner, draw the lines, and sew. So you can follow along with what I'm doing. And you'd, of course, do the same thing with this pair. So let me put that off to the side. We've sewn that ahead of time just to save us some time. And we will once again trim apart. Now this is where I like to start pressing things open, right here. Because you can see now we want to distribute the bulk evenly and we want the block to set as flat as possible. If I were to press this seam to one side or the other, do you see how I would have a very lopsided amount of bulk and we don't want that. We always want to distribute bulk evenly as much as possible with block assembly. It helps the block to lay flatter, have a flatter appearance. And during the long arm quilting process, you're not sewing along and then all of a sudden you go from two fabrics to six. That is not, I've, got, I've definitely heard that feedback <laughs> from our quilter of like, hey, if the seams had been pressed open here, we would have had a less of a struggle during that long arm quilting process. So something that will give your blocks a better appearance at this point, pressing that open, and you're making your long arm quilter happy. And that could be you for all we know, right? Maybe you're long arm quilting your own projects. We are doing that here now. We have the Amara, uh, from the Handy Quilter Amara 24. We are so, we love that machine. More of that to come. Um, we touched on that a little bit when we did the medallion star overview. I don't know if you've seen that, but much more to come about long arm quilting. We absolutely are loving that amazing machine and just the partnership with Handy Quilter. They're awesome. So if you've been looking for a, a long arm quilter and you want a company that is going to provide next level customer support, it is Handy Quilter. That is the brand to have. Um, I've been there in person and seen and heard the calls coming in. It's amazing. They're so patient and so experienced. So a little bit of a diversion there. Um, the next thing we're going to do, we have made these oversized, and that's a great thing. This gives us a chance to square them up because you can see this is a very precise block. Now, let's look at what we have here. We've got some, some things that are, let me just show you here so it's easier for you to see. There's a bullseye right in the middle, but then there's also this diagonal. I'm gonna line this up on this unit with, of course, the diagonal, but that bullseye is right in the middle. This is how I know I'm in the sweet spot because I can be along this diagonal, 
But the bullseye isn't centered. I need it centered and on the diagonal. Once you find that perfect spot, you need to give a fair amount of a press. And if, the, if it moves, just realign, but keep your eye on that bullseye and the, da and the solid line along that. There's a lot of fabric in the back and this is why this is kind of almost a little high centered. So let me show you what I'm talking about. That's a lot, right? Anytime you have that cluster, you have to press down a little bit firmer. I'm going to anchor my fingers right there so things aren't moving as I'm trimming. And I trim slow. Let's get centered for one more of those. Okay, so just a little bit of trimming and now we have a perfect block going into this here. Perfect, love that. So of course you would continue with that, make another one on the other side, right? And then we're going to sew these rows together, the middle row and the bottom row. And let me flip that over so you can see how we did our assembly. Looks like that's probably the top row right there. Middle row, bottom row. Let's look at that. And we'll zoom in on that so you can see the pressing. I think the pattern really just said press. So that's why we want to show you how we did things so that you can mimic that if you don't already have your own technique established uh, for that pressing. As an early quilter, I didn't realize the significance of pressing, and I think I've today parlayed that it's significant. It does play a role uh, for, for certain. So that's how we make our block here. Now, for the larger block, this is really the same, same concept. We made our half squared triangles with the white with the stars and the navy. Same with this, and then, of course, opposite until you have your larger block, just like this. And just like the smaller block, this one gets trimmed. Now, you've got two options actually on this. You can use the creative grid, six and a half inch ruler, or they have a fussy cut. This may be something that's new to you. This is a six and a half inch ruler, it just happens to be a ruler. And you can similarly lay this on the diagonal. It's got its bullseye. That ruler absolutely works. Or a square up ruler, here, which has even more markings. More, there is undeniable lines going along both diagonals, whereas this has a line going along one diagonal. So I just wanted to expose that to you, um, and you could decide if either of those rulers work for you. However you want to do this, at this point, this needs to be squared up to six and a half. And you can see with the bigger blocks, the ruler doesn't get quite as high centered there. And you can see that the spinning mat is just a perfect, wonderful addition. I didn't have to lift the block up. We have a perfectly pieced block. And then of course you'll make four of those, lay them out as uh, shown. And of course, sew those together. The top row, I would absolutely be pressing toward the um, center, same here. And these, just because we have a lot of seams going here, you're always going to want to press away to whatever block has the lesser seams. And that'll give you interlocking seams as you sew your rows together. Your sashing comes in and of course all your stripes. I would absolutely be pressing toward those red stripes for the same reason we talked about. You don't want any of that red potentially showing here. So we're absolutely pressing toward our red and then joining that up and quilting as normal. So these are actually simpler than they appear um, I wish I had more kits to sell you. Gosh, I wish I did. I keep asking Riley Blake just in case, and they have no more. So if you have not, if, if you didn't get in the program, you know what? There's more programs coming. It's so fun to learn tips and techniques, maybe get exposed to rulers you were not aware of and other notions. If Again, if you haven't subscribed, do that today, and I will see you soon on another shabby video. Mm -hmm.